All right, welcome back, everybody. So this week, we're going to take a look at the Malaysia 2K versus the Malaysia Solvent 2K. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. So this week, we're going to look at the Malaysia solvent clear versus the water base clear and we're also going to look at Malaysia claims that um, when you add pigments to their finishes that it doesn't affect the uh, durability so I wanted to test that and see what that looks like so let's let's look at the finishes so <clears throat> this is the solvent base and I shot this with a Harbor Freight uh, 1.4 um, no problems it was a little bit choked off, so I would recommend um, like a 1.8 or a 2.0 if you want to get more material flow. Now they do have a reducer that you can add to it. I didn't use the reducer. I just I want to when I first shoot something, I want to start with kind of my standard and then kind of go from there and learn, you know, what works best. So, but I think like a 1.8 um, would be great for the solvent base. Um, it's really easy to shoot, no problems. Um, you can shoot it with air assisted airless. Um, you can shoot it with a turbine system and it would work just great as well. Um, really easy product to use. And this is um, two coats of finish on this, okay? I shot the sealer, which I have sitting over there, and then I shot one coat and bada boom, bada bing, it's done. Uh, it's a really great product, I really like it. All right. So here's the water base, um, and it looks pretty much exactly like the solvent base, feels just like it. Um, on this one, I shot this out of a 1.3 with a 10% reduction out of a uh, Cap Spray Titan 115 turbine just to see if it could be done because there's been a lot of issues with guys trying to use the turbine system with this water base stuff. Um, it's kind of an issue, but you got to think about the European guys is they pretty much, you know, Kremlin and all that stuff is a European and French company and that's what they use. So this stuff is really shines with an air assisted airless. Now, um, when I shot this, um, I didn't have any problem with the orange peel or anything like that. Um, when I did when I was using the the pigmented uh, stuff so I think you're safe with the clear shooting it out of turbine system or even if you added pigments to this it's probably going to reduce the viscosity um, and you would be fine now there's a lot of guys that are running those Graco 9.5 units that they're using a, a, a pressure pot and it's hooked up into your turbine and I may show you guys how to do that um, and they're saying that they're getting pretty good results with that now I bought a Harbor Freight one and tried it um, myself and I I just didn't really think that it was still there for me personally um, like I said some guys some guys say it's working out fine for them and they love it so that is an option but my thing with that is if you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna buy a Graco 9.5 and then buy a really nice pressure pot and all that um, you pretty much bought an air assisted airless so if you're really wanting to shoot the Malaysia stuff it really shines out of the air assisted airless the only advantage to using the um, the go in the other direction is you can you, you know you can make a smaller amount of material because it's gonna take you about half a quart um, with the air assisted airless to do it, but it works really really nicely did um, shoot the clear um, Out of the turbine it was a little choked off and so I, if you're gonna shoot the clear I'd recommend a, a 1.8 or 2.0 and you're gonna have to have one of the higher powered ones You're not gonna be able to get it out of a four stage. You're gonna have to have a five or a six stage turbine um, to shoot this stuff now if you have an HVLP set up um, you're probably going to have to run somewhere up to 30 PSI um, to get it to come out. Um, it just takes a ton of atomization to shoot these um, these higher solid water base coatings. It's weird with water base stuff and tips on um, air assisted airless. They tend to use smaller tips. So like 
a, a nine or a, between a nine and a thirteen. Um, you know, if you're shooting vertical, you'd probably want to go with like a nine or an eleven. And if you're shooting flat and you're shooting giant panels, I'd probably go with like a 13 or something because you could just lay it on, you know, super heavy. Um, but that's going to kind of control your flow rate along with your fluid pressure on your air assisted airless side. So anyway, let's get to testing these things and see um, if there's any difference between the two of them. Okay, so we're going to do the chemical resistance on the water base first. And let's take a look and see. Let's try our denatured alcohol. All right, let's look at lacquer thinner. And then let's look at the acetone. Okay, so if we look at these, um, the denatured alcohol, I don't even think you can really even see this in here, but there's a very slight outline on each one of these, but I'm going to pretty much give that a um, no effect on that. It lightly glosses it, but you would have to have the light exactly right to be able to, to see that. So that's pretty impressive. Okay, so I want to compare this to the um, pigmented, and as you can see, um, it does, you do see a little bit of a scuff mark on the acetone and the lacquer thinner. The denatured alcohol, um, it doesn't really do anything to it. Now, I do find that interesting because Malaysia does claim that when they, they have some kind of special pigments that when you add it to... Um, they're finished that it doesn't affect the durability Look but at the solvent based version and let's see how it holds up All right, so we got our denatured alcohol I'm sorry I already rubbed this before I turned the camera on so all right so let's take a look at the lacquer thinner Oh, interesting. We have um, some a little bit of damage there. And let's look at the acetone. All right. So the denatured alcohol had no effect on it. The lacquer thinner, you can see that it does... Um, it does uh, kind of dull the finish a little bit and then the same thing um, with the acetone so hey look guys I'm giving the wind to the water base on this one let's let's look at that again um, so as you can see between the two here I got the acetone and then we have that on that so I think the water base is more chemical resistant than the solvent base now the only thing you know I can think of that would explain that or different is you know there's obviously active solvents in it okay so now what we're gonna do is one of the things I'm interested in with the 2k is a lot of 2k's are rated for outdoor use now I'm not sure whether or not that Malaysi rates theirs for outdoor use or not um, I think um, I had somebody that was associated with Malaysia said with with this if you use it outdoors you want to go with 10% if you use it indoors you can go as little as 5% on the hardener um, so what we're gonna do is I've put a tablespoon of water on all these and we're gonna cover it with a cup and we're gonna come back in 24 hours and we're going to see um, what the water resistance is is like on this um, so we'll see okay so after doing the water test and letting it set for 24 hours um, on the water base I can see a very light ring I don't even think I can get it on camera 
um, but the water resistance is good. Now this is three coats of the product um, on top of this one. Solvent base, um, no problem with the water resistance. And then the sealer, um, it did really, really well um, as well. No, no issues there with the um, with the sealer, which you would expect with the 2K because this stuff is rated for um, outdoor use. So let me go ahead and let's give you my final thoughts on this. All right, so what's my final thoughts? Well, first I want to start off with the solvent base. Um, as far as the chemical resistance, I was a little shocked that um, it wasn't, that the water base actually beat it out. Um, but I think that it's probably a little more um, water resistant than the water base, which is kind of unusual. Usually your water bases tend to be a little bit more um, water resistant than your solvent based products. Um, if you're a solvent guy, um, I think this this coating is a no-brainer. Um, it's super easy to use. I mean, it's it's almost foolproof. You know, get you one of the mixing cups, mix up you know um, your ratios and stuff. And it's I think it's a little bit more forgiving than even like a conversion varnish. Um, now it's a lot thicker than a conversion varnish, and so you're gonna have to change your tips up and stuff like that. But um, I really like it and um, I would if, if I was shooting if I was used to shooting a conversion varnish I'd probably switch just for the labor savings in and of itself um, you're just gonna save a ton of labor because you can do the thing in two coats now one other thing uh, my rep told me is if you're a guy that does epoxy stuff this is a great alternative to that I think he was telling me that he has somebody that does a lot of um, these giant um, conference tables um, and they shoot like three or four coats of this stuff in a day. It's cured by the next day and it goes out the door. If you were to do that with an epoxy, it would take you much longer to do it. So that's something to think about if you've got something that you want like an epoxy-like finish in that build. This is one way to get that um, and get it fast and out the door the next day. So something to consider. All right, now the water base. Um, I like the water base, but my issue is um, with the water base is if you don't have the right equipment, it can be difficult to use. Now, the chemical resistance and everything is is great. Um, it's one of the better 2Ks that I've seen. Um, but I, you know, I really feel like you need to use an airless or an air assisted airless. Now, you know, we talked about the turbine stuff. Now, if you're shooting the clear, you can use a turbine, but you're gonna have to have like a five or six stage turbine to do it, and you're gonna have to use a 1.8 or a 2.0 needle just to get enough flow rate out of the out of the gun. Um, as far as the the um, you know, Malaysi's claim, we kind of saw that um, you know the clear is better than the pigmented um, so I'm not sure where that's coming in I don't know you know these companies I don't know how they test this stuff if they're testing it on glosses or what the sheens are that they're testing this stuff on but I can tell you that from all this testing I think you got that if you add pigments to something it's gonna reduce the chemical resistance and if you add pigments to a clear it reduces the viscosity of it so I think you just need to keep that in mind with those things. Now, on the water-based side, um, with the pigmented, you're going to get a conversion-like finish, just no doubt. That's the way it is. Um, so I, I wish I wish there was more of a, a, a balance with the uh, material being a little bit thinner, but then I guess in reality it takes away the solid content. And one thing I can say about Malaysi is they are about solids okay it's got the mo the highest solid content of about any of these water bases that um, I've seen so I like the material I recommend giving it a shot um, solvent or water base just with the water base again make sure you got the right equipment um, and you're not wasting your money on trying to do something that you know you just can't do it with your your equipment set up so that's it for this week hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you next time thanks for watching